hello welcome everybody to viva las vegas time to stamp now i've got some dust clay it's an air dry clay and i'm going to use it to stamp into so that i can make um an, a head some legs and i'm going to use a little leaf stamp to make some wings so i can make a little fairy so it's really important that you roll the clay with a jar no no it's not it's just what I happen to have on hand. You could use whatever you want as long as it's a smooth flat surface and then you've got to push your stamp you know pretty hard into it. You want to get a fairly good impression and then once you've got that you get your little craft knife out and you can cut around the outside. Obviously my craft knife isn't very sharp because it left all these little jagged edges around the outside of the clay but that's okay you can just smooth them down with your finger, roll your clay up and start again. So I did the legs, as I said, the head, and I did two leaves to make some wings. Now, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to dry properly. You can hit it with a heat gun. Uh, don't put it in the microwave. I've tried that. It explodes. Yep. Once it's dry, then you can add um, your first layer, which is black. And I'm using an ArtGraph carbon disc. You can see that I just put a little bit on my messy mat and add some water and it's water soluble and I can give it a good coat of the black underneath. I do this with all of the pieces. Um, don't worry, it's not going to stay black. It'll go a little bit white, a little bit pink, a little bit black again. But this is the first layer. We're just going to keep building layers on top of each other. So the next layer is some gesso. Um, now I'm just lightly spreading it with my finger. I'm not painting it on really, really thick like I did with the black. I just want to skim over the top. I'm just catching those raised edges. Now remember, gesso is quite transparent. It's not opaque, so you've got to give it a, quite a few layers because it dries and you think that you can't even see it. That's the whole idea here is to build up layers. So you just keep going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards until you get the result that you want. The only colour I don't go back in with is the black until I get to the chipboard. But on these little Das Clay air dry pieces, I'm just constantly building up the white. And then you'll see me in a minute, I'm going to build up some colour. See, so you can see that how different they look now already just with the white over the top. Love the way it shows up those raised areas. Now I've decided to come in with some crimson and it's a metallic crimson. It's just gorgeous. I didn't realize how much it was going to stain my finger though. You'll get a bit of a giggle in a minute. There you go. You can see when it shines in the light how it's got a metallic effect. So I've put some of this on the legs and then I'm going to add some bronze in with it. And the bronze and the crimson together make a really nice rose gold color. And this is what color I'm going to do the face and probably most of the chipboard. I mean, who knows, really? I'll probably change my mind halfway through. Look at that metallic shine. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can see that I'm still not using a brush. I'm just using my finger because I really want to skim over the top still. Except here, I'm finding that I'm getting a little bit messy. So I get the heat gun out. And if I dry it slightly, then I can go over the top again with a bit of white and I won't lose that pattern. <laughs> now here I've worked out for some reason I've got pink gesso. I don't know how it happened. And then all of a sudden it dawns on me that my finger is very pink from the paint. So I've tried to clean it off. Look how pink that is doesn't matter what I do I keep getting pink gesso so it takes me that long to work out just to use another finger yep now I'm right back on track anyway so I'm going back over the top with the white again because I felt that I kind of lost that pattern that little raised area on those legs and I also added another little bit of pink to the cheeks of my dude now to the chipboard so this is some Umwow Studio chipboard. I think it's a little bit long at the bottom. I might have to chop that off. I definitely chop that off. And I'm just trying to align everything to see what it's going to look like. And I realize I need a base to stick everything on. It can't kind of just stick to itself. So I've got a piece of um, thick card here and I'm going to again line everything up and then just um, try and work out what size a piece of card I could have to make a base for my fairy to stick everything on to there you go I'm trying to align it <laughs> I think I decided that the wings start to look like ears so I've pulled them down a bit and now I'm going to stick it all together with some uh, Hilmar's 
glue. I find this is great for sticking anything. The cardboard's poking out a bit, so I've just traced around the areas that I would like to remove so that when I stick everything together, you're not going to see those bits of cardboard popping out, just like that. So here I come in with my glue, stick, stick, stick. And now I need to make an additional little tutu for my little fairy. So I chop off some fine chul and I've decided I'm going to stick it down with double sided tape. The comedy of errors that's happening here with this piece of tape, it just, it just won't stop sticking to my finger. Right, gotcha. Anyway, it's a really good sticky tape. So I'm just going to add the chul to it and then I'm going to add another piece of this horrendously sticky double sided tape which are compliments of Terry from Finland. They have got good double sided tape over there. And just chopping up the little tutu bit so it looks a bit ragged. I also discovered one day accidentally that if you heat chill with a heat gun, it shrivels, which is really cool. Look how cool that is. Okay, back to the task at hand, sticking down this little tutu. And that goes over the top. And then you've got to get off this double-sided tape. It's just the bane of my existence, I tell you. There you go. Not too bad. A few more chops. And then I, I think I decide to heat it again. Yes, here we go. Shrivel, shrivel, shrivel. Does it all look so cool when the heat gun gets it? It just goes, just shrivels. Sound effects. Sorry. And some more glue. And this is when, this is when it starts to not fall apart because in actual fact it becomes very, very strong because everything needs a contact surface. All of a sudden I realised that it all needs to be level and be able to contact each other to be able to stick. So I'm going through um, adding some bits and pieces of um, extra cardboard. The wings need to go lower, Fiona, or else they look like ears, remember? There we go, and the head will go there, but there's a gap behind, so I need to cut out another piece of cardboard, and I need to make a little triangle to fit in there. Ta-da! See how I'm building it up? So it's all at one level. We can't have it not at one level because nothing will stick. Well, I mean, it'll stick, but it'll all be lopsided. Anyway, you get what I mean. Right, time for some spray gesso on my chipboard. Best invention ever, gesso in a can. And I've decided to add a little crown because my little fairy dude needs to be a queen. Yeah. So once that's dry and I'm giving it a hand with a little bit of paper towel, then I can start adding some layers to it the same way I added layers to the stamped dash clay. Now I've started with the bronze and I'm going to add a um, little bit of bronze on the shoes because you know you can't go without bronze shoes and then what I'll do is I'll slowly add some more colours to it as well. Um, just trimming my back, I'm actually not doing this in any order whatsoever so sorry about that guys. Okay so I've decided that I needed to cover up the cardboard and I've got a little piece of canvas here that has got some print on it and I've just drawn a like a bodice shape and cut that out so um, it can actually be um, seen underneath the chipboard. I just need to build those layers up, you know, that, that making it all flat so that everything sticks. So this is what I'm doing here, adding a little triangle wedge in between the wings. And then you'll see that the bodice that I've cut out will sit quite easily on top. Obviously, I need another layer on the little bit down the bottom. So it's all the surfaces are all flat. That's much better. I'm also going to draw around a little bit of the um, cardboard that's sticking out. And I'm going to cut it out with a humongous pair of scissors because that's what you do. You don't go find the little ones. You don't use a craft knife. You use the biggest pair of scissors you can possibly find. It worked. Get some Helmars down there and stick that bodice down. Nobody even noticed. Okay, I'll go back to lining everything up again. That's going to work. See, now you can see those little words poking through. It looks much better than just the cardboard. Yep, chop its head off. It's way too big. Um, and look, reach for a craft knife. See, I did have one. I didn't have to use the humongous scissors. Yep, the head will sit there just perfectly. And then I'll use the chipboard. Whoop, that bit fell off. Nope, I'm going to cut some more head off. Yep, I keep doing this. I'm surprised I've actually even got a head left. But, you know, it's got to be just right. That's it. Am I going to chop any more off? No, but guess what? I've exposed some more cardboard. And here come the humongous scissors again. <laughs> You'd think I would have learned. I've got a craft knife sitting right next to it. Yes, there you go. There it is. Oh, I don't know. Please let this trauma be over. <laughs> all right, all good. Nope, scissors again. 
I must like these scissors. They are pretty cool. Anyway, see that through my hands in the air. No, let's just stick the head on. Let's. I've done enough mucking around here. I did decide though that I needed to have another piece of um, cardboard at the back because that head is quite heavy. That clay is quite heavy. And without that, it certainly was going to just fall straight off. Now I come back to the piece of chipboard, which I'm layering with the crimson paint. Beautiful metallic paint, same on the crown. Give it a dry and then I'm going to add a little bit of gesso over the top. I really want it quite pink. The crimson is lovely but it's very very dark and I, I think that if everything's too dark it's just not going to stand out. So I'm just going to layer it until it looks really cool and, and grungy. So I grab a little bit more crimson paint. Who needs a palette when you've got a piece of core flute underneath your table? I just want to make those legs and wings a little bit uh, more crimson. So everything looks separate. Because I've used a monochromatic colour scheme here, everything tends to blend in and it's hard to differentiate between one piece and another. So what I can do is make some of it um, a little bit more shaded and some of it a little bit more lighter and then that way everything looks like it's its own little piece. I'm also giving the um, face a little bit more of a whiter highlight. I found that it got lost in the wings. I just I needed it to stand out a little bit more and then I'm using the pink directly onto the face to highlight just a few little pieces of the, um, the cheeks and the eyes. So with the chipboard part, I'm going to do the complete opposite and I'm going to use black to shade around the outside so that it, it becomes a separate piece. It doesn't blend in with the wings. I found the two colours were too similar, so see now how it stands out. I am going to add a little bit of water on it just, just to tone it down ever so slightly so it looks a bit more of a washed effect rather than being harsh black. And then I also decided that maybe the legs could do with the same thing. So I go around the outside of the legs as well. Now the crown needs to um, also have some backing because it's see-through, similar to the chipboard tummy piece. And so I've just popped it a bit on that canvas again and here are these great big huge humongous scissors doing their job. Now I'm just going to pop it at the top of the head and use a little bit of the uh, metallic bronze just to highlight the tips. So it looks like it's got some little jewels on it. Wire. I love wire. It's my favourite thing. Just threading it through the chipboard piece just to make it look a bit fancy. I like the texture, but I'm also going to use it to actually attach it to the bodice, to the, the tummy part of my little doll. Now I could have just glued it on, but you know, why when you've got wire? Seriously, you can just thread for hours, which is pretty much what I did, took forever, but that's okay. So you can see how it's just wound round, around, 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 and then I just tie it at the back and voila, it's so cute. Right, now we need to fix the back because it's looking like one heck of a hot mess. I'm just roughly drawing a bit of an outline on another piece of cardboard so I can just put one solid piece through the whole middle of the doll just to hold it really, really, really still. In theory, it should hold the whole thing together. I do need to add this little piece of cardboard at the top so that it's all one level and then I can pop it on the back. Now we've created... A very sturdy back for our little doll however it's a bit messy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lather some gel medium just a clear gel medium doesn't matter if it's glass or matte or either way you're not going to see it as long as it's really really sticky and it sets like cement and then I've got some um, I want to call it tissue paper but it's not tissue paper it's a little bit tougher than tissue paper but it's not regular paper maybe it's deli paper actually it could be sandwich wrap something like that greaseproof paper what are they whatever they call it anyway so what i'm doing is i'm collaging over the back my theory is that i'm creating like a bandage <laughs> it's yes it needs to be fixed it's all broken no it's like i'm trying to cover it up i'm, I'm trying to cover up the hot mess right but i'm also trying to make it secure and i mean i can remember as a kid when you did paper mache that it held together like a rock Anyway, it worked because look, ta-da, now I'm just going to make a hook. I've got a uh, wall hanging piece, like that little brass hook there. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have anything else. And then I went and got a hammer <laughs> and I bashed it because that's what you do. No, I just wanted to flatten the little hooky bit so that it didn't open up. And then I had so much fun with the hammer that I got back and bashed it a bit more. No, I'm just going to gel medium this onto the back now. Now the gel medium alone probably would have held it. 
But just in case, I did my little not tissue paper, but probably deli paper thing again. I'm just going to keep going with the theory that paper mache is pretty strong stuff. So it's it's got to work. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. How does that sound? I think I've done enough now. <laughs> I've done enough. I'm just going to paint the back all black to cover up that big mess that I made with the paper. But, you know, whatever happens. I'm sending it to DD anyway, so I won't have to look at it. And, and it faces the wall. It's, it's the back. So it shouldn't really matter in theory. As long as it doesn't fall down. <laughs> if it does, it's her problem. She can fix it. She's got way more skills than me. So the only other thing that I did that I forgot to film was putting the title on and all I've done is just cut up some word stickers from Seven Dots and added them on. So there you go. There's my transgender fairy queen. Isn't he beautiful? Well, thanks again and I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>